Hello dear friends and welcome back to the Credible Indian. I hope everyone is staying indoors and staying safe, gaining new experiences every day. Before I start today's video, I'd like to request you all to please hit the subscribe button and share our videos as much as possible. It has been a lovely response from all of you. I hope you all keep sharing and spreading our videos like you have been doing till now. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start with today's topic. So today I want to talk about a country that has always intrigued me. It is one of the most mysterious and secretive nations of the world. Not much is known about its present regime apart from its history. So let's delve into the historical events that shaped North Korea into an authoritarian state that it is today. So if we look back at the history of Korean Peninsula, it goes back to the prehistoric times. The Korean people slowly developed their own culture and civilization and were first united by Sila dynasty in 668 AD. They developed a good military over the centuries, which is why they were able to contend with expansionist ambitions of their neighbors for centuries. Korea became a unified empire in October 1887 and remained so till the Japanese annexation in 1910. The Japanese rule was a brutal experience. The Korean language and culture was suppressed and a lot of guerrilla groups formed to revolt against the injustice as well. The only positive development during this period was the development of Pyongyang as the center for western culture. Now the status quo changed after the defeat of Japan in the Second World War and the peninsula was divided into two parts along a line now famously known as demilitarized zone. The north was taken over by the Soviet Union and the south by the United States of America. Both of them put their favorable leaders in charge. Singh Man Rhee in the south and Kim Il Sung in the north. In 1948, both these leaders proclaimed themselves as the leaders of the entire Korean peninsula. And in 1950, Kim Il Sung tried to unify Korea under his rule through military force. This obviously didn't go down well with the people in the south and this led to the Korean War. This war is till date the most destructive event in the Korean history and it is estimated that more than 30 lakh lives were lost in the war which continued for over 3 years. Finally an armistice was signed by both the sides in 1953. This ended the major hostilities and the demilitarized zone was established. The 1960s and the 70s saw North Korea develop at a better pace than the South. It was due to the resources provided by Kim's close friend Stalin. Kim Il Sung remodeled the society around the lines of Juche, which basically meant an ideology that promoted Korean autonomy and focused on self-sustenance. Due to Juche, the state seized control over private property, the media, and travel restrictions were also imposed. With this began the throttling of people's freedom. Pyongyang was developed as a socialist capital and numerous monuments of Kim Il Sung were erected nationwide. This was done to build a cult of personality and secure obedience of the masses and we all know how successful that has been. The 1980s saw economic decline. The quality of life stagnated and finally the disintegration of the Soviet empire in 1991 led to the collapse of the North Korean economy. In 1994, Kim Il Sung passed away, and his son Kim Jong Il took over as the leader of the beleaguered nation. The first few years of his rule saw a great famine, almost wiping out nearly 5% of the country's population. And with the state not being able to provide food, the regime's control over the people wasn't watertight anymore. People started looking for ways to feed themselves. Illegal markets came up. Some fled to China, and with them. information regarding the regime's repressive control started trickling out to the outside world the social picture changed further as the once highly ordered and controlled society gave way to a disorganized and fluid society moving into the 2000s the nation saw a slight progress between the relations of north and the south as south korea adopted the sunshine policy which meant giving unconditional aid to the north The living conditions of the people though remained very poor as the regime focused only on staying in power. In December 2011, Kim Jong Il died and his son Kim Jong Un took over as the supreme leader of North Korea. Did anything change for the better? The answer is no. 
Kim Jong Un has become in many ways the modern version of his grandfather, purging, demoting and promoting regime officials to secure his power base. But by becoming the first leader of North Korea to meet the president of the United States and South Korea together, he has done something different. Although nothing significant happened as a result. He's also been in the news for his love for atomic bombs and missiles. We've all heard reports of weapon testing by the regime and it is estimated that North Korea possesses anywhere between 15 to 60 nuclear warheads. What the exact figure is? Oh well, that is what the authorities world over are trying to determine. There have been reports recently that Kim Jong Un was gravely ill and even rumors that North Korea is preparing for life after him. If that was the case then it would have been very unclear as to who the next leader of North Korea would be. However, recent reports have shown a few images of the leader walking out and meeting his people. However, there are a lot of speculations about the images which are floating over the internet which have been released by North Korea. and it is also doubted that the north korean leader kim jong un as seen in the latest photographs is not the real leader but a body double what is the truth behind this will unravel only with time but north korea still remains one of the most repressive states in the world where there are travel restrictions within the nation people are imprisoned for meager offenses basic human rights are denied dissenting voices are trampled upon and will that ever change is what only time will tell let's just hope it is sooner rather than later that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the whole video comment below if you liked it and what more you would like to see based on these international topics which we started to talk about that will help us a lot in going forward and if you like this content then please do leave a like and help grow the channel share this video and also click the subscribe button till then take care stay home stay safe Ciao